welcome everyone in the first lecture we discussed about what is hydrophonics what is aerophonics in the second lecture we discussed like how many elements are there what are essential elements what are non essential elements then what are mobile elements what are immobile elements what are beneficial elements what are structural elements all that we discussed right now in today's lecture we'll see some historical account of mineral nutrition and then we will talk about the criteria of essentiality which is proposed by arnon and stout okay now let's get into our topic i told first we'll discuss about some historical details right now come on tell me who is father of biology or who is father of zoology do you know is he aristotle aristotle who is father of biology and father of zoology he proposed a theory called humus theory let me write down aristotle he proposed what did he propose he proposed humus theory aristotle proposed humus theory according to this theory what is aristotle's belief is he thought that plants will absorb organic and inorganic nutrients from the soil okay so according to the humus theory proposed by aristotle he believed that plants absorb organic and inorganic nutrients right so he told that plants will absorb organic and inorganic nutrients then came van helmont what's the name of the scientist van helmont now what in which year van helmont in the year 1648 now what did van helmont suggested he for the first time he made a study about the mineral nutrition which is carried out in plants so van helmont in 1648 he for the first time we can write right he for the first time studied mineral nutrition in plants he studied mineral nutrition in plants now he felt that minerals are required by the plants the next scientist is woodward right what is the name of the scientist wood word now wood word in which year wood word in the year 1699 wood word in the year 1699 he proposed that soil will provide nutrients to the plant wood word in the year 1969 so he proposed that soil provides nutrients or shall we write mineral nutrients soil provides mineral nutrients to the soil to the plant okay then d saucer now what did d saucer do d saucer in the year 1804 d saucer in the year 1804 he concluded that yes plants absorb minerals from the soil only d saucer in the year 1804 he concluded he concluded that yes it is correct that plants absorb minerals from soil only minerals from soil only and next contribution is by libig next contribution is by libig 
so this is in 1800 libic in 1900 right so libic in 1940 i think yes libic in 1940 now libic proposed law of minimal factors libic in 1940 he proposed law of minimal factors now what do you mean by law of minimal factors he tells that if the growth of the plant is retarded then which elements concentration is less because of the deficiency of that element the growth has been ret uh, retarded understood children libic proposed law of minimal factors for example an element x y z is there x is 10 grams in concentration y is 5 grams in concentration z is 1 gram in concentration so there are three elements x y z one element is 10 grams another element is 5 grams other element is 1 gram the plant growth is retarded it seems now whom to blame x to blame or y to blame or z to blame x is good concentration y also moderate z concentration is minimum then we can blame z we can tell because of the deficiency of z which is 1 gram the plant is having stunted growth the plant is having dwarf growth that we can tell who proposed this that was proposed by libic in 1940 what is it called as law of minimal factors understood children then what did we see we told we'll start a class with some historical details first we were talking about father of biology father of zoology father of biology father of zoology his name is aristotle he proposed a theory called humus theory his belief is through humus plants will get organic and inorganic nutrients later who is that person who first studied that plants need minerals mineral nutrition is there in plants von helmont then in which year 1648 then next who told that like plants absorb minerals may absorb minerals from the soil woodward and who concluded or who confirmed that yes plants absorb minerals from the soil only d saucer and what is the contribution of libic libic in the year 1940 proposed law of minimal factors what do you mean by law of minimal factors means if there are some minerals if the mineral if it is having least concentration and the plant is not able to grow properly if it is showing stunted growth retarded growth blame that minimal element tell that it is deficiency of z the plant growth is not happening this is what is explanation uh, for law of minimal factors coming to the next scientist who, who are they arnon and stout in the year 1939 arnon and stout in the year 1939 they proposed criteria of essentiality so what did they do they proposed criteria of essentiality arnon and stout in the year 1939 they proposed criteria of essentiality what do you mean by criteria of essentiality i told you what's the criteria to write a neat exam that you have to pass your 12th exams and then minimum pass percentage should be 50% and your group should be physics chemistry and biology that's a criteria that's the eligibility to write the neat examination in the same manner if an element if it should be called as an essential element what is the criteria who proposed arnon and stout proposed it in which year they proposed 1939 they proposed it they have given three points to tell that if any element is fulfilling point number 1 point number 2 point number 3 if any element fulfills all these three points yes it is an essential element if the element fails to fulfill even one function also next function also third function also then call it as a non essential element that is what is the rule called criteria of essentiality they proposed three points and if any element fulfills all the three points yes that is an essential element i'll write down the three points first take a screenshot about the historical account yes now now we are going to talk about the criteria of essentiality which was proposed by arnon and stout i told they have given three points 
let us see one by one in ncrt also we have this ma but in ncrt they didn't mention the scientist's name and the year also they did not mention that we added right right so we are writing about criteria of essentiality proposed by arnon and stout 1939 let us talk about the first point they told the element must be absolutely necessary it should be absolutely necessary and it should support the growth and reproduction isn't it now if we don't have understanding about botany zoology physics and chemistry so now what can we write a neat exam right how can we understand it in the same manner if it is an essential element ma it should be absolutely necessary it should support the normal growth and reproduction that is the first point they told they told the element right the element must be one minute they told the element must be absolutely necessary and it should support it should support normal growth and reproduction of the plants now it should they told that the element should be absolutely necessary and it should support the growth of the plant it should support the reproduction of the plant now in the absence of that element then plant should not grow plant should not reproduce plant should not complete the leaf uh, life cycle and what is the end product uh, what is the product from where we get the next generation seed plant should not produce the seed so they tell that in absence of the element in absence of the element then plant should not grow amma plant should not grow plant should not reproduce correct it should not grow it should not reproduce it should not complete its life cycle it should not complete its life cycle and it should not produce seed set it should not give seeds it should not complete the life cycle it should not reproduce it should not grow such essential is the element so then obviously it is an essential element only now take carbon without carbon can the plant grow without hydrogen can the plant grow without oxygen can the plant grow without nitrogen can the plant grow no right they are making the structural compounds of the plant root shoot stem stem leaf flower fruit everything contains carbon hydrogen oxygen nitrogen sulfur all these are essential elements then right now let's go to the second point the first point i think you understood they told an element must be absolutely necessary it should be necessary for the plant and it should support the normal growth and reproduction in absence of the element it should not grow plant should not grow plant should not reproduce plant should not complete its life cycle plant should not produce the seed set now when we have to talk about the second point they told the requirement of the element must be specific and it should not be replaced by any other element the requirement of the element the requirement of the element must be specific it should be specific and it should not be it should not be replaced by any other 
element it should not be replaced by any other element so the element should be that important that if that is not there it will not show growth it will not show reproduction and the function of that element should be such a specific that in absence of that element like it will not grow reproduce and no other element can replace it also no other element can replace it also for example let us think magnesium magnesium is required for making chlorophyll if chlorophyll is not there plant cannot prepare the food by photosynthesis a plant is not able to manufacture the food then it can't grow it can't survive it can't reproduce it can't develop right so i told i'm not having magnesium i'll give you manganese adjust with manganese or i'm not having manganese i'll give you molybdenum is it so means in you can make chlorophyll with manganese or molybdenum or other element no right for making chlorophyll magnesium is very much required and you cannot replace the magnesium element with any other element yes then magnesium is an essential element understood children so the requirement of the element must be specific you can take an example so what example i told magnesium is required for chlorophyll synthesis magnesium is required for chlorophyll synthesis and no other element can replace magnesium right and no other element can replace it can replace magnesium so if there is any element like this and it is required for the metabolism and no other element is uh, replacing its role yes that is a uh, essential element Now let us talk about the third point. In third point, we tell that the element must directly involved in the metabolism of the plant. If it is an essential element, then the element must be directly involved in the metabolism. of the plant if it is an essential element it should directly participate in the metabolism of the plant now magnesium is participating in photosynthesis uh, magnesium also participates in respiration chlorine activator zinc activator molybdenum activator manganese activator so means there are so many minerals which are participating in metabolism they act as activators for many enzymes okay so an element must be directly involved in the metabolism of the plant so many elements we will list down and we will see like magnesium participates in metabolism manganese participates in metabolism then calcium participates in metabolism zinc participates in metabolism like that so many elements are there which will directly participate in the metabolism then all these are essential elements then so these are the three points yes all essential elements they are necessary for growth and reproduction yes correct all essential essential elements will have specific functions and its role cannot be replaced by any other element correct and the element must directly involve in the metabolism the element must directly involve in the metabolism that is also correct so according to them this is the criteria for essentiality and we tell that there are 17 essential elements right we tell that there are 17 essential elements and ma all the 17 essential elements will will fulfill all the three points all the 17 essential elements will fulfill these three points that is why they are called essential elements take a screenshot we will continue further all right now this is one way of telling essential elements there is one more method of classifying essential elements and that is a broad category basing on their functions we can do one more classification of elements but that classification is based on their diverse functions right so let us see that one also now criteria of essentiality how many points children 
three points. But when we do broad classification basing on their diverse functions, then we can broadly classify enzymes in four groups then. Right? Let us see that also. So, we are telling essential elements can also be broadly classified into four groups. They can also be broadly classified into four groups based on their diverse functions. Basing on the functions what they are doing, we can classify the essential elements under four groups. Let us see what are the four groups. They tell that essential elements should be a component of the biomolecule. We have a chapter, biomolecules. In that we studied what are biomolecules. Carbohydrates, proteins, fats, nucleic acids, enzymes, these are the biomolecules. Amma, if it is an essential element, it should be a component of the biomolecule. And biomolecules, they are structural compounds, right? So, the first point, what these people tell is, essential elements should be part of biomolecules they should make biomolecules and hence they are called structural elements since carbohydrate protein fat are structures so we can call them as structural elements and hence are called structural elements now, we already know what are the structural elements, what are the framework elements. In lecture number 2, I already told you carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and nitrogen. So, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen. These four are the structural elements as they make up carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and nitrogen. They make up carbohydrates which is a biomolecule. They also make proteins, they also make lipids and nucleic acids. So, they are called structural elements or framework elements. Next point they will tell essential elements are the compounds of energy related compounds. ATP is an energy related compound. Magnesium will make chlorophyll. Chlorophyll will make food energy. That is also an energy related compound. So, the second broad category is essential elements. They tell that essential elements should be the components of energy related compounds. Essential elements should be as components of what? Of energy related compounds. For example, Amma, what is the currency of the cell? ATP is a currency of the cell. Now, in ATP, the important part is phosphate. Now, phosphorus is an essential element. Now, in the same manner, if we go, magnesium will make chlorophyll and chlorophyll will do photosynthesis and in photosynthesis it makes food energy it makes food energy so magnesium is making food energy and ATP in which phosphate is there is making chemical energy. So, the first diverse group is essential element should be part of biomolecule. Second one is essential element should be a component of energy related compound. Third one is essential element should be either activator or inhibitor for enzymes and enzymes are participating in metabolism. So, the third function they tell that essential elements should either 
act as activators they should either act as activators or inhibitors for enzymes they should either act as activators or inhibitors for enzymes amma and what will enzymes do enzymes will do metabolic reactions right we told like enzymes should be uh, essential element should be directly involved in the metabolism it's another way of telling the same point essential elements should either act as activator for an enzyme or it should either act as an inhibitor for, for an enzyme let us take some examples which are already there in ncrt again i'm taking magnesium here magnesium is an activator magnesium is an activator for the critical enzymes of photosynthesis it's an activator for the critical reactions of photosynthesis amma in photosynthesis in photosynthetic carbon fixation in photosynthetic carbon fixation there are two cycles c3 cycle and c4 cycle i will do this in detail when the photosynthesis chapter comes right so i think after this chapter the next one is photosynthesis chapter only now c3 and c4 plants in c3 plants the important enzyme is rubisco and in c4 plants the important enzyme is pepkase in c3 plants the important enzyme for making glucose is rubisco and in other category of plants c4 plants the important enzyme is pepkase if you want the full form of rubisco is ribulose bisphosphate carboxylase and oxygenase shall i write it here rubisco full name is given in ncrt it is ribulose okay it is ribulose bis phosphate carboxylase and oxygenase again i'm telling you we will see this in detail in photosynthesis chapter then pepkase means phosphoenol pyruvate carboxylase is another enzyme phospho enol pyruvate carboxylase is another enzyme without these two enzymes photosynthesis cannot be done so that's why we told these two are the critical enzymes and who is the activator for these two critical enzymes magnesium magnesium activates this enzyme also magnesium activates this enzyme also it can control photosynthesis then right now let's take one more example in ncrt they have again mentioned about zinc zinc acts as an activator for an enzyme called alcohol dehydrogenase zinc acts as an activator for an enzyme called alcohol dehydrogenase alcohol dehydrogenase in fermentation for making alcohol this enzyme is required and for this enzyme zinc is an activator in ncrt they have given one more enzyme molybdenum molybdenum is an activator for an enzyme called dinitrogenase is an activator for an enzyme called dinitrogenase which is involved in nitrogen fixation nitrogen cycle is a last topic of this chapter there we will see what is this enzyme how does it helps in nitrogen fixation but for this enzyme molybdenum is an activator in fermentation for making alcohol adh we will tell alcohol dehydrogenase zinc is an activator in photosynthesis for carbon dioxide fixation for converting carbon dioxide into sugar in two pathways called c3 pathway and c4 pathway two important enzymes are one is rubisco the other one is pepkase for both the enzymes magnesium is an activator this is a third broad classification and the fourth classification i'll write down here they will tell that some essential elements can even alter the osmotic pressure of the cell some essential elements can even alter the osmotic pressure of the cell 
some essential elements can even alter the osmotic pressure of the cell here we should mention about k plus ion potassium ion right so the potassium ion if it is coming into the guard cell it is called influx now this is a guard cell right this is the these are the guard cells and this is the stoma now the it is closed this is closed condition now what i will do is i'll send k plus ion inside so when i send k plus ion when i send k plus ion so what is this called influx ion coming inside is called influx influx of k plus ion has made the guard cell to swell it became turgid so influx influx of k plus ion made the guard cell to become turgid if the guard cell is turgid then the pore which is this much when this becomes big then it will open then the stomata is opening so opening and closing of stomata is under the control of k plus ion so means it is altering the osmotic pressure then also it is essential element okay children what did we discuss in this class first we have seen the historical account then we talked about the criteria of essentiality proposed by arnon and stout then we have seen an other classification also where we can group the essential uh, minerals into four categories basing on their functions the first function it should be a part of a biomolecule second function it should be a part of the energy related compound third function it should either act as activator or inhibitor for enzymes which participate in metabolism fourth one it should alter the osmotic pressure of the cell a very good example is k plus ion hope you understood the lecture in the next lecture we will talk about macronutrients their roles and their functions if you like the content like do share and subscribe to my channel thank you